Any skilled tradesman has a wide variety of tools in order to fulfill his goal. And this is no different. Even in a sense of programming, they use tools in order to get their job done. So let's look at a few tools that I've developed. Or should I say just a couple. Here we are in the Map Creator Studio. This is a tool that I've uh, created to make map making for Space Aces a lot easier. So you go to which map you want to work on. This one's uh, for dual. And you can see that I've changed this map. And we've got these two save points. And if I fly down here, oh, fly through here, we see these particles for health packs. Then we also have these spawn eggs for health packs. So you got your blue spawn point, your red spawn point, and then your two heal health packs, and then your destroy armor stand in case if you accidentally place one. So this makes map making quite a bit easier because we can see where everything is without having to switch modes all the time, which isn't too bad, but it's uh, pretty obnoxious. If I fly over here, we see the particle effect of the flame at the red spawn. And if we go over here, we will see the blue particle effect at the blue spawn. Along with this, uh, I changed this elevator to be jump boost. And the reason for that is sometimes shulkers, the turrets, I've used shulkers for the turrets, they hit you and you get levitation even though you shouldn't. Anyways, back to the main point. This is a very useful tool to help making maps and it'll make the process a whole lot quicker and I should be able to add maps a lot more uh, quickly as well. And if we go over here we've got this update thing. I usually leave it off because it uh, makes the sidebar flicker but you can see that it's constantly updating and that's because it's detecting how many of each of these there are. So if we take a blue spawn point and say a couple of, let's just grab them all. So blue spawn point, which is right here, it'll go up to two. If we do a spawn strong health pack, that'll go up to two. And then if we do red, that'll go up to two. Just use the destroy armor stand. So this is a very useful tool. And another benefit is that I can just send this map to another pe uh, another person and they can make their own maps. And maybe there could even be a contest who makes the best map, something like that. And alongside this, uh, there's three teams, dual, TDM, and setback, and that just changes the sidebar more than anything. Uh, that should not be TDM display, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. And the main reason I've built this is to fix the maps if we find any errors, and more importantly, add new ones. Now uh, you can see these respawn points are white, and also if I, uh, if you look here, you get respawn point, and these all change to TDM instead of uh, setback or dual. Uh, I wanted to fix the maps because there's a bunch of air pockets and if we switch these all to spectator then they can fly and then see all these air pockets and wonder what's going on. So this is a very useful tool to have in my toolbox and I'm glad to have it done so quickly. I'll fly over to setback real quick. 
It hasn't changed a whole lot. But this is going to be really nice and be a lot more productive. And the point of a tool is not entirely just to make a job possible. I mean, I could have built all this by hand and then uh, saved it and done a bunch of things, you know, all manually. And there's a certain point where that's better than building a tool for it. But the tool is to save time for repetitive tasks. See, I can load any map here, but if I were to do it manually, I would have to do the same thing for every single map, and it would take quite a bit longer. So the tool just saves time for the amount of effort uh, that you want to put in. Let's go back to the main world and see just how everything looks. By changing the maps, we have a few problems arise, however. And one of the biggest ones is in setback. If I go to uh, spectator, you will see this. There's no roof or ceiling. You say roof or roof? Sometimes I say roof, and sometimes I say roof. I usually say roof. Anyways, because these black walls are saved in the map, but the ceiling was outside of the map, I removed the ceiling so that we can have day maps, because you just see that up there. Uh, let me get this particle. We can see the spaceships up there flying across, which uh, give a pretty cool look if you're in the middle of a game. And you just look up, take away all those stars. But there's a problem if you want a nighttime map and you don't really want to see those. Oh, that doesn't matter. Because the top layer is not pumpkins anymore. Pumpkins are the black block I use to make it pitch black. So we have to save the actual top layer into the map. If we load a different map, then we'll see uh, another problem that's arisen because of this change. So I'm going to go ahead and load a map with this command. And that's actually the map I wanted to load. For some reason, Hmm. Okay, it got removed. We can see a problem in that if you're down here and running around, this looks really cool, the ships flying above, but you go to this thing and you wonder what's going on. Really, there should be barriers here. The clay is so that when you're outside and you have to be in game mode 2 so if I go into game mode 2 it'll uh, reset the block so people can't go into the spawn point but we can change this block whenever I mean it doesn't matter a whole lot the problem I was facing however is that this just looks really out of place and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense so we have to find something to do with these and change them a certain way. So that could be our next project. But before that, I'm going to show you just a couple more things, just real quick. Uh, go into game mode 2. Oh, of course, that's blocked off. I changed the health pack sound, so oh, I added it. It was just a normal item pickup sound. So you've got two different pickups. You've got the big one, which sounds uh, its a lot slower. And the small one, which I can't remember exactly where. Okay, there's one. The small one sounds like this. It's a lot faster. And I think they're fitting. I, I'm not going to complain too much about them. We can fix them later if they get kind of annoying, but 
I think they'll work the way they are. So let's go ahead and work on these platforms, the spawn points. Okay, so I tried to make like a little ship that's floating. And I think I did not too bad. It's definitely tolerable. If you go in, you get your classes and the armor stand will probably be around here. And I'm going to try to make all of the commands that run just into one so that we can be, uh, we don't have to look at them and be more efficient. So I guess I'll start compacting the commands and uh, probably do that away. We won't see it like when it's done. Maybe we will check on it later. But I was going to work on something else. So I finished all the commands and I realized that there's kind of a cool trick that I would like to show you uh, what I did exactly. So before we had these uh, gates that if you try to exit them they open up just like this one and so I wanted to keep that because you don't want uh, people to you know kill you while you're in the lobby and the command I used was just a fill command uh, and it was very specific to these four blocks now I wanted to use the same function if I fly down here uh, the same function, setback spawn, for all of the spawns, not just one of them. And this was a little bit tricky, but uh, there's a block in the game that's been added not too uh, recently called the structure void. And this is how it knows what block is uh, going to be turned back into glass. So if I break these and I step out, they don't get replaced, but if there's structure voids there, then they do. So if I fly back in. Okay, that's cool, but how do you know if the player is near, uh, near this? So the first thing it does is it fills this in based on the player. It says, hey player, if you see any structure voids within small range just go ahead and fill that in okay so the player goes ahead and does that but then the next command right after it uh, test for a block which is string uh, two blocks below you because string you don't use to build with uh, I could have used something else uh, like enchantment tables let's say anything that you probably won't build with but you can use for a block. Uh, I use string because it's uh, a lot less obstructive or uh, obnoxious. It doesn't get in your way uh, just from viewing it from the outside. String you can't really see from here. You can see the command block, but uh, that's hidden pretty well. Uh, ooh. So if it finds the string two blocks below below you then it says, hey, instead of, uh, well, it still runs the command, fill this with glass. But then after it fills it with glass, it says, hey, if there's any glass, fill it with the structure voids. So pretty much the same tick. So if I walk next to this, you'll see it changes. But then I walk, uh, well, there's no string below me. But yeah, if I fly above, above it, it, uh, it doesn't detect the string two blocks below me and then it does that and also if I I'll do set block I guess set block oh yeah these are coordinates string zero. Oh, it's not string that's right it's tripwire I got that wrong first and I was like why is it not working but so tripwire zero is going that way tripwire one is slightly different apparently two and then see it. What? Oh, that's being pressed. So if you step on it, it resets. No, I don't know. That's weird. Uh, five, six. These are all just different data values for it. 
see how the hitbox changes and weird stuff like that happens. If you do uh, negative one, and it's not it doesn't work for uh, set block, it works for uh, test four block, I think. Test four block uh, here, you could do concrete one, and it's not gonna run because it's uh, seven. You could do seven, and it would just be that. But then if you change it to let's say blue, well, that didn't work. <laughs> uh, brown, I guess. Then it won't run again because it's different. But if you do negative one, oh, not J negative one, negative one, uh, it doesn't matter what color the block is, it'll still find it. And that works the same way for any block with uh, metadata. So uh, if you look at it, you see 251, 12. Same with uh, yellow wool, or any wools. Uh, there's a few other blocks like glass. Uh, I think stairs do that. No, oh, not stairs, I guess. Uh, leaves do that for sure. You got 161, 0, 161, 1. So if, whenever you use negative 1, it says anything that is this block. It doesn't matter what meta value it has or metadata. It'll still run. So that's what I used for the string. So it doesn't matter how it's orientated. So that was a mouthful. That was a lot of talking. I hope it made a little bit of sense to you. And I hope you like this. If you really look at it, you notice that it actually places the glass inside of you, which is a cool effect. Uh, it's hard to show because you see that there. It pushes my head back and then... Oh, that's weird. But yeah. There's uh, lime glass in where I'm standing right now. Once you go out, you can't get back in. And uh, I guess one more thing. Let's say that's open for whatever reason, and not string, uh, fishing pole. A guy by the name of uh, Mobility, by the class of Mobility, I should say, tries to shoot this in there. It just gets killed, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, you could throw bombs in there. That'd just be more annoying than anything, because uh, you're invincible in there. If I... Uh, look at this. You have resistance, which is a really high resistance. Apparently there's a pixel on that. I need to fix that. And then instant health. Uh, means you regenerate just about instantly. So here we are in the Arena Rumble 2 lobby. And we're going to just get an overall feel for the lobby. Just see how they do stuff and how clean it feels. First of all, you've got credits up here. That's, this is just players, uh, map makers I mean. So you've got kind of a tutorial area here, which is nice, they use uh, armor stands. I think I can go into game mode 3 and see them, okay, so I've not hop, uh, but still I know it's armor stands. Uh, and it's a good thing that they check, they lock that I mean. So the border is like that. So you just see all of the different things that it tells you. It's very clean. I like the way the uh, armor stands look. So here you've got team select. I believe you select them by standing in it. And this is cool. You get particle effects uh, displaying which team you're on. And uh, particle effects, I didn't realize this till not too uh, long ago. You can actually run them for specific players. So some players see one particle effect and other players may not see it or see a different one. But you can see the hotbar changes with the team and you've got sound effects to tell you which uh, team you're on and then it's nice to have a different sound effect for spectate too. Oh you've got a stats button just open two. Huh, I guess that counts if you try to open a lock chest. 
So if we go over here, you can see stuff like this. This is like your wind particles. And it's kind of cool. So we, everything's clearly defined by this. And I want to do this with space aces. Uh, at least the different areas you go to. I wonder what happens if you start it by yourself. Well, I think it'll just... Yeah, okay. And I'm on spectate team, so... Yeah, if you walk in here, you can see everything's clearly defined. That's really smart, because I don't I don't think this uses a resource pack. This is actually two player heads. And you've got... Select all the classes... It's real nice. Uh, name tags, and this is cool. You've got randomized names. I'm assuming these are just the map makers. You can select the weather and the time of day, which is uh, cool stuff that you could, uh, cool options really. You can turn chest on and off and regen on and off. But all of this stuff just, when you look at it, it it's very vi visually appealing, and you don't have to read in order to understand. Like, you see hearts here, and if you right-click that, the chest goes away. You know how the game works just by with the visuals. So, you've got this team, or this map viewer, which I really like. I've actually added a few maps since last time I played this. I played this with a few friends. Uh, and you've got this stuff, which is really interesting. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's look at another lobby. Okay, so now we're looking at Makers Wars by the Mind Makers team. I do respect them quite a bit. I mean, I respect most map makers. Uh, so, you've got very, I call this minimal, excuse me, minimalistic, there we go, uh, type lobby, where every most of the, everything's just barriers, and you can't walk outside of it. But it's very visually appealing what is uh, visual or what you can see and you've got things like this like little uh, statues with the armor stands gives you something to look at for just a little bit while you're getting ready for your friends to come on or about ready to play so let's say I want to be a shark team I think I, if I, okay, I, I need another person on, but if someone comes on, then the entire area gets replaced with something else, it's a structure or something, it might be clone, but that area, you just, you have more items like this, and you select which items you want to add to your starting uh, kit, pretty much, but this is really nice. They, uh, this is just in all of their maps. They just throw this in there. And you can click on their links. They've got their nice uh, Unicode symbols for that. But I can't really do something like this for space aces. I mean, I can make something more like this, like uh, visually appealing stuff but I can't make it minimalistic. I have to enclose everything in walls because there's so many command blocks everywhere. Uh, I really like the way this looks, but I it's just too late now. So that was just a couple lobbies. And now we're gonna take a look at the Space Aces lobby and see what it's lacking. 
when you want a map to be really clean and really fun and just give a better taste in your mouth first of all you think of the playability and then you think of kind of how it's uh, created how optimized it is but one thing that really adds to a map's concept and a map's design is the way you portray information to the player. Okay? So for example, the how to play section tells you kind of the gist of how to play. It could be better, it could be worse. But this is a really long hallway, and the problem with this is that it's just reading. Now, for some people, this is really enjoyable, just learning about the different characters. However, not very many people, I would, I would say less than them, or more than the majority, that's what I want to say. The majority of people will not find this that interesting. So we want to be able to combine this information, but also make it visually appealing. Because this is colorful, yeah. I mean, it could just be all be white text. But it's not super visually appealing. And it's not very organized either. So that's why... We're going to be doing this. If you look at this armor stand, you can see that it's slowly ro rotating. Now we can make it invisible and take away the plate so it's not shaking so much. And then we'll just have a floating diamond helmet. So, that, I mean, that sounds pretty cool, but it's not very useful, right? But what if we put a different hat on it? Let's say a dragon head. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. But do you know what other heads are in the game? That's right, player heads. So we could have player heads rotating. So now you see this like stone texture on an armor stand and it's slowly slowly rotating would this not be a great way to display what planet the characters come from we could put this in the center here and then they would just be showing the planet and we could switch it depending on the character Maybe signs or something along here. So this is going to be an interesting way. And making the textures for these, I know you could make your own. And then there's a way that the game knows how to uh, figure it out. So I'm going to get started on this project and see, uh, show you a few pro progress updates along the way. So this is already looking really nice, isn't it? We've got our armor stand that's slowly rotating. Can't jump up on the table. And you got your space kind of uh, backdrop, so to speak. Might repeat this on the top as well. Just out of curiosity, let's see what happens if we give it glowing. Will that work? Oh, uh, okay. And I believe it's just glowing one B, something like that. Uh, oh, whoops. Maybe it is one B. Okay, so it shows the entire armor stand. Uh, we're not gonna do this anyways, don't worry. For some reason, this activates randomly, and I really don't like that. There we go. 
So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get a few of the things done. I'll be back when it's looking more like what I want it to look like. So I went ahead and got two of the characters done. Haley Wales. You need to see all of the nice information. Looks like she was born on Eris, which we can see right here. If I go into game mode zero, which is the mode you're supposed to be in, it looks really clean and nice. So we see Eris just spinning there, nice and slowly. And you've got your lore behind the character, the primary and secondary. And then if we switch to Gun Frobe, see everything is red now because this is the bad scout character. The, not necessarily bad, but the uh, Raiders League United, RLU, character. And you can see he's born on the dusty planet of Nuskala. And this is actually just an Earth. You can barely make it out. There's North and South America, uh, Africa, and then Asia with Australia being that. These going off every once in a while. So we're going to have to get all of these done. And there's 13 of them. We got one done, I guess. So that's uh, 12 more to do. And this thing is expandable. Uh, there's definitely more spots than there is characters. So we don't have to worry about that. So I guess I have to get cracking. So I started setting up a few more of these and I edited the video and it seems like we're at 32 or 33 minutes now. So as much as I'd like to continue, this would take a lot longer and I'm waiting for my artist to work on these. Yes, I've got my own artist and it just so happens to be, if I click here, Dr. Strawberry. But I set up all the lores that I've already created, and I'll slowly continue to write more lores. Uh, this is going to be more something background. I probably won't do updates on it until it's all done. But I think the progress we've made today, I mean, for me it's been over a course of a week. But for you guys, it's been just half an hour. I think it's been uh, well needed and nice to have. Uh, nothing that's actually required to make the map more playable, but it definitely makes the map more enjoyable. And that's my goal, is to make it as enjoyable as it, it can possibly be. So, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.